Hello everyone. Um, in this set of tutorials, I'm just gonna start working with this scene that I have. And as I animate and just, you know, define cameras and stuff like that, I just go over things that I think uh, would be important for you to know and you might wanna apply um, in your animated scenes. Uh, so these are gonna be like pretty long tutorials, I'm thinking, okay. Um, but, you know, because it's close to the end of the semester and we don't get to cover all this stuff um, with the Thanksgiving and other breaks coming up, I thought it's better to have it like as tutorials so, you know, if you have time, you can just go over them uh, in your own time. Uh, so think of them that way. Um, okay, so I created the, the, this Maya scene in the previous tutorial, uh, you know, a background, a wall, and a sky. And so the first thing I wanted to mention to you is that make sure that you have this arrow that shows the front of the character actually to be the front of the character. Um, like, I mean that if you want to roll it, don't roll it this way or this way, okay? Because some of the attributes that you see here, they're working in such a way that they think, okay, this ball, the face of the ball is here. So, um, that would be the first thing. The next thing I wanted to mention you was that, okay, when you're making this animation, it's good to think of cameras, right? You know, you need to shoot this scene that you want to animate from one angle. Um, so we have learned how to create different cameras previously. I'm just going to go over it again. Um, so this perspective camera, this one I'm going to use for animating, um, like for figuring out what I want to do and just rotate around my creature. Then I'm gonna create an, you know, a bunch of other cameras that I can use for like, you know, introduction shots that are kind of including everything and then close-up shots. And then I can switch between those in the camera sequencer, which I'm gonna cover in a tutorial later, okay? So let's just do that. Um, I'm gonna create some cameras. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna create one. Uh, in my perspective view, I'm gonna go to panels, perspective, and new okay so now I can see that this is a new camera so I'm gonna call this one um, let's say introduction or maybe hmm what would be the best way to name that so I can remember it later um, I'm gonna call this one full shot maybe yeah let's not get too obsessed with naming full dash um, camera enter and now I'm you can see that I'm in the full camera like view right and if it's not showing up here you like you don't see the name of your camera here go to display and make sure that in the heads up display um, the camera name is checked as you can see here okay um, so for this one, for the cameras that I want to use for um, doing the animation, I'm going to turn on the resolution gate so I can actually see that what are the, uh, you know, scene elements that are in this camera, okay? I'm going to turn off the grid for now. I don't need that because, um, I, or maybe I do. Okay, let's just have it turned on. No big deal. Uh, so this is the first camera, okay? I'm gonna create another one and I'm gonna name this a uh, new one, like a close-up or something. So I'm gonna go to panels again, perspective, new. I'm gonna call this one um, close cam. Okay, turning on the resolution gate for that so we know what we see. Um, so this is the clo the camera that's gonna look at our character and like closely, okay? Um, and I can switch between those views um, by just creating like a panel that has like four views and then set them to be the you know set up with these cameras, okay? So let's just do that. That's gonna make our life easier in the long run, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna uh, right click. Oh, it just reminded me, I have this application that allows me to show you the keyboard clicks that I do. Let me just grab that. If I can remember which one was it. Ooh, mm -mm -mm. let's see. Um, key 
keyboard? Something? On a screen keyboard? No. Hmm. In the application, something keyboard. Please help me to remember that. It should be here, isn't it? Nope. Uh, let's just see. Keyboard, what do we get? Type setting. Keyboard. Uh, on a screen keyboard. No. Keyboard structure. Keyboard. Junking? Is it this one? Nope. Okay. So I'm going to turn that on uh, after I'm done with this tutorial. Sorry about that. Um, so let's just, uh, I'm going to right click here and go to hmm, single pane, four pane. Yes. Okay. Four pane. This. Okay. This is good. Um, so the thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to just set a bunch of cameras here. So this one, do we have perspective yet? Not here. So I'm going to just set this one to be on my perspective camera. I'm going to hit six. So it shows the textures as well. This one, I want to set it to be in the full camera. This one, well, I'm just going to let it be like the top view or something like that. Maybe I later create another camera and I can use this one for that. Okay. So the next thing would be, I want to go to my custom shelf here and I'm going to save this panel. So whenever I have this scene open, I can just click on the, this icon that it's going to be created here and it's going to bring me into these four views that show my cameras. So to do that, uh, we've done this before. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go to layouts. I want to save this four view layout and um, where was it? Was it in edit something? Mm -mm -mm. Edit layouts? I think that's where it is. Okay. Saved layouts and then edit layouts. Okay. Then you're going to go to this layout panel and just hit new layout. And I'm going to name this ball animation for view. Okay. Um, and say, I think at this point you need to click away from it. I know it's dumb, but I, I, f I found out that, you know, that was the way that it worked for me. If you just say add to shelf, it's not going to do it at this point. So what I do now is that I'm just going to click on anything, something else, and then click back on this one. Now I know it works. The name is going to show up here. Now I can say add to shelf and close. Okay. So this one, is my four view panel. Let's say that, you know, I'm in this four view panel that shows top front, blah, blah. And then I want to switch to my own four view panel, then it's going to be here. You can also set it up to be in one of these views that you normally might not use. Um, so yes, as you can see here, if you right click on this view, this is going to be replaced with this one that you just created. Um, if you want to have it here. Okay. Uh, so now if I do this and this, this is going to be my layout. Okay. So we created a bunch of cameras. This is our close up camera. This is this one. And this is the perspective one that we're not going to use for play blast or create the video. So the first things would be, um, first thing I want to mention is that, uh, it's good to have the ball movement, just the translation first and get the timing right, and then get to the other attributes. I don't know how much do you agree with that at this point, but um, hopefully you're gonna agree with me along the way after you've done like so many things, and then you're like, oh, I wish I could just squish the time so it happens faster, but oh, I have keyframes all over the place. So it's good to just create only keyframes for the movement first and get the timing almost right, like almost close to right, and then you're going to worry about the rest of the things. And if you need to adjust the time, you can just do that later as well. Okay. So what I want to do for my storyboard, I want this ball to enter this scene in this view in the full view. And I want to see the wall as a part of it, something like this. 
and I want the ball to roll and come close and my ball it's not gonna know that there's a wall here it's just gonna be like oh, I'm gonna just bounce off and you know be you know doing my own thing maybe even just move in I, I, I can test it out um, so my ball is gonna just move into the like roll into the scene and just hit the wall and be like wait what just happened okay so to have that I'm gonna create keyframe as I advised you to do uh, only um, translate Z this the front of the character is showing translate Z as you can see here as well right so I'm just gonna right click here and be like he selected at frame one for translate Z and then okay let's say how long does it take for the ball to just roll in and hit the wall at this point I'm just gonna make a lucky guess I don't know what would be enough let's say hmm 20 less than a second okay so at frame 20 I'm just gonna click on translate Z and uh, holding down the uh, scroll on my mouse middle mouse click and drag and make it hit the wall here okay and then I have to set a keyframe for that key selected so I'm just gonna play this animation this is a really long um, uh, like time bar for me to show I don't need all that I just need this part and now I'm just gonna hit play it's it's a little bit too fast I think so I want to move this a little bit forward so you can see that only with the translation being changed it's easy to figure out if the timing works or almost works when you just you know go to frame 20 and just keyframe everything and squash and stretch and everything and then you watch it and be like oh why is it so fast and you have to just go in and it's it's much more work okay it's a it's better to block in your animation that's called blocking in animation with the key poses and the most important things first and work in layers just you know get the timing right and then go to get the timing right for just coming into the scene or the movement then make it work with the roll and then for example later squash and stretch and contact points and like you know anticipation and stuff like that you can add it on layer by layer okay it's a good way to work uh, one scene at a time and complete it like in layers not just um, you know getting entangled in just one frame and making that one frame be perfect and then move on to the next frame because in if you work in that um, workflow then you're gonna have such a hard time uh, having an overview of the whole animation remember it's all about timing and spacing so it doesn't matter how much time you put into getting the you know ball in the right position and with uh, all the right attributes if the timing and spacing is not right so get the timing and spacing right first and then get to the details okay um, so for this one I'm just gonna shift um, shift holding down shift I'm just gonna click these icons are appear here and I'm just gonna grab the middle one because I want to move this into time and be like okay 24 frames maybe that's a good thing and I'm gonna hit play that that seems that seems about right so now that I have the move I want to add the roll to see because um, all these things when you add them it's kind of changing the sense of timing as I said the timing that you set up for the first time that's gonna be a rough uh, approximation um, so I'm gonna add the roll here um, roll is this right forward back roll so I'm just gonna set a keyframe at frame one both are at zero you know we should match this values almost if we want the ball to roll and not to slide and then control C this value I just double clicked control C control V and then I want it to be <coughs> actually facing forward um, let's say like this like having her head down and be like bang oh I didn't see you what are you okay key selected now let's see what we get Boom. the timing seems about right or maybe it's still too fast yeah I think it's still too fast I want it to be slower I don't want this ball to be like hitting her head really hard to the ball I want to be like you know just you know getting to the ball and notice it after that not like ooh, what was the head my head is broken now ding okay 
Sounds good. So I don't have any squash and stretch for, like, you know, when it hits the ball, it's, you know, the, the ball is going to be stopped and its volume would be pushed toward the ball. I haven't done that part yet. I'm just getting the timing for the first part to be right. Sounds about right. This is good. Um, so then I can move on and add a little bit of squash and a stretch in here, but I'm not gonna, um, or maybe I should do that. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of this view. I don't wanna change this view that I work because this is my camera, the render camera. I don't wanna change that. I'm gonna go to my perspective view, hitting F, so it kind of frames the ball. Now I can work with it because I know the timing is almost right, so I can get close with it and just see what I want for this ball to have. Okay, so I'm just gonna have it not um, going into the wall, right? And then uh, because I changed this value, I need to keyframe it. And at this point, I want it to have like a little bit of contact and a squash and a stretch, okay? <clears throat> and a little bit of backward movement. So let's say when it hits the ball here, it just um, gets squashed um, in. So for squash and stretch, we have this value. And I want it to show me the handles for that because I'm not going to be squashing it in this direction. I want the squash to be in this direction. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, selecting this curve, I'm going to squash like this. OK. And then I'm going to move this handle like this. Let's see what we get. Mm -mm -mm. Where's the contact point? Give me the contact point. And then hitting W, I'm just gonna push it here. And now I can see that the amount of squash that I get is like too much. So I'm gonna just pull back a little bit that's yeah minus three sounds about right and i can see that as i do that the ball kind of goes inside the um, ground so i make sure that the floor contact is on show floor contact transformation i'm just gonna say yup because i want to push it up so the wall is not going inside Maybe I don't have to do that. Maybe if from the beginning. Okay, so that's zero. So I'm thinking that should be fine with the camera that I have set up. I don't see it like going inside the ground in this angle, which is fine, right? Um, yeah. So let's see what we have here. Um. Oh, I shouldn't have set this value in this because I wanted to first hit the ball without any squash and stretch because before it hits the ball, it doesn't have any squash and stretch, right? But after it hits the ball for a few frames, it's just gonna be squashed, right? So I know this value is minus three, four. I'm just gonna copy this, set it back to zero because I want the value to be zero as it hits the ball. So I'm just gonna keyframe it here at frame 35. And I'm going to move a little bit forward and now set it to the value that I had before. Okay. Um, also, I'm going to set this to zero at frame 35 because I changed this one to 35. Um, it should be at zero and uh, at frame. Okay, where's my squash and stretch? Didn't I, did I forget to key that? Okay, see, see what happens? Um, so let's just do that again. Squash and stretch, you have to be this number. And then key select it. I forgot to do that. Okay, my bad. I'm gonna set it to be 40 for now uh, because I can remember it easily. 35, 40, okay? Then I'm gonna go to this control and on frame 40, I'm just going to set a keyframe for these two values that I changed. And then I have to set a key value for when they are zero. Because if I don't do that, they're going to just be on this um, 
Or maybe not. Yeah, they're gonna stay on this. This is gonna be staying like this from the beginning to the end. I don't want that. I want it to be at its resting, like, you know, at its original place before the ball hits the ground. Or maybe not. Now that I'm thinking, because it's gonna be animating that. So I'm gonna set keyframes for this here. That's what I want, okay? Before that, I don't have any squash and stretch, so it doesn't matter that it starts being this value. Okay, so you can see if I change the. So let's see it in the in this view. Let's see what we get. Let's see the whole thing. I don't think the rolling is in the right direction as I see. It rolls backward instead of forward. That's what I see and that's why we have been noticed in the previous video. So I'm gonna fix that first. So translate Z, frame 1, 0, 0. This is good at frame 35. Let's just change it to minus 34. Key selected. Um, Okay. And now it's doing it backward. Is it my eyes or do you guys see that too? Well, I cannot hear you, so I don't know what your answer is. But let's see. No, it's rolling the right direction. Why did I think that then? And it hits the wall and does this. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Let's just watch that. Blah, 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 boom. Okay, so for sure, this is like a long time. It's like, oh, I'm hitting the ball. Now it's time for me to squash. No, we don't want that. So I want to uh, put all these two keyframes closer to this one. To do that, remember, when you select this, it shows only the keyframes for this. If you select this, it shows the keyframe for this. You don't see that much of a change here, but any control that you choose when you're not in a character set, in our case, we don't have any characters. Okay, um, it's more of a, it's a topic we haven't covered. But uh, for now, uh, the way that you work with this rig, just know that each um, control that you uh, choose, it's going to show up here. This is not all your keyframes. These are only the keyframes for the control that you selected. Okay, so if I want to change the time, one way would be to go to the animation workspace like this and then have this boat selected and now I can see that it's showing me the boat both um, both of the attributes of these two um, controls in the graph editor and also in the outliner so you can move them all here or here it doesn't matter it's they are, they are the same thing they're gonna be matching and updating okay so I'm gonna just change this one from here just gonna hold down shift and move it closer to happen in like three frames seems about right so say boom okay okay this sounds about right but it's there's no way to judge it unless i put it back to not squash then we can have a good sense of timing because now it does the squash and just stops so we don't know if this action is actually with the right timing so I'm just going to put it back to its original like squash and stretch value two frame after 38. Um, so I'm going to set this to be, well, I don't have to change this one, but I want to change this. So squash and stretch back to zero. Um, and then what else did we change? Nothing. That's just the squash and stretch. So I'm going to set a keyframe for this here. Okay. What? I think the amount of squash and stretch is also too low. Uh, like we need more of that. So I'm just gonna drag select with my left mouse key button and then middle click drag this down. And also uh, for it to get a better sense of like, you know, oh, I'm hitting the wall. 
we need to move it backward as well a little bit, right? Because when it hits the wall, it doesn't just stay there and be squashed and then just, you know, squash back. It moves back also. When you hit something, um, you just, you're going to be like thrown back, right? So that's what I'm going to do. So it just hits the wall here and then moves a little bit back. So translate Z would be... Uh oh, I changed my camera. I'm going to lock this so it doesn't happen again. So I'm going to pull it back a little bit here and just set a keyframe. Um, let's just hit F so it frames that and I can see the values better. Holding down Alt Shift and right click I get to control you know the differentiation that it shows me in the graph editor um, let's see that so the first things first for me to get a good uh, hit the wall action this needs to be not smooth why because if it's a slow slowing um, if it's slowed down when it hits the ball, it's as if the ball knows that it's going to hit the ball. My ball doesn't know it's going to hit the ball. So it's just going to go straight and be like bang. So the shape of the curve here should be like a V because it just jumps, you know, it just hits the ball and jumps back. Um, let me just take a look at the time for this um, video. Yeah, I'm going to stop it at 30. I don't want it to get super long. Uh, but uh, so let's for this one I'm gonna set this to be linear okay and this one I want it to happen a little bit like this and then I want to have a for a backward roll as well so it needs to do this a little bit and then key selected see what we get what Boing. okay so the amount that it goes back I'm not satisfied with that um, I'm gonna uh, like maybe the amount is good but at the time is not right I'm gonna just have it slide a little bit more over a longer time and to do that I need to have um, translate and forward back roll both of them to be stretched into time to be like happening longer which means the distance between these two keys should be more so i'm holding down shift drag select these two <coughs> keyframes holding down shift middle click holding down shift is for just moving the keys either in this direction or in this direction. For our case, we're going to move it in time in this direction, holding down shift, middle click, and just like that. So let's see what we get. So it's good. Um, the fact that it kind of starts looking up as it moves back, I don't like that. I want it to happen. Um, Actually, let's have this. This is my translate Z. Um, I'm gonna have this to be more because I wanted to do that. I'm gonna pull this up. Oops, not that way. This way, so it rolls a little bit more back. And then for the forward back roll, um, I wanna have uh, this to happen. Let's see. Alt Shift Middle Click and holding down alt middle click to pan in this view so I want this to be like let's see so here oh, I also want it to be linear let's just test it out see what we get I also want to break tangents because before it hits the ground it looks good after that I want to change it so I'm just gonna break this tangent drag 
and then break the tangents so the handles are free and now I'm just drag and middle click so I want it to kind of look pretty fast middle click drag holding down shift and I want the looking up kind of continue after it stops that's why I'm pushing it further than um, the translation key okay now I think the Z is just too much I'm just gonna push it up kind of a slides and I don't like that I, I think it needs to roll um, so here the value for translate Z at this frame is 30 something the forward back roll is 33 so I'm just gonna change this I'm going to change this until it's closer to 30. Let's see. Uh, uh, is it better? Rolling a little bit this direction and then go back. Nope, it's not good. Um, maybe, okay, at this point we have 30, 33. What if we do this? It just kind of rolls like twice. Let's see what we get. Let's get creative. Oh, that's too much. So I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit. This value, I'd like it to be here. This is good. Um, holding down shift, go up, go up. Okay. That seems about right. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Maybe, maybe goes a little bit back and then kind of like this rolls a little bit forward and back before it stops it just comes to a really sudden stop and I don't like that so what I want to do is I'm going to push this here. I need a keyframe for that. I cannot do it with just a graph editor. So I'm just going to set a keyframe, key selected. I'm going to work with this here. That's a better indication for that. Um, something like that. We also need to have keyframes for forward back roll here as well because you can see that you can select the curve and right click say insert key. That's what I did. Uh, make kind of the same thing happen here too. I think it needs to do this. It still comes to a sudden stop, which I don't like. it can just roll a little bit more here I 
Okay, sounds about right. Um, so I'm going to stop this video here. I just wanted to show you, um, you need to just play around with this graph editor and keys until you get the animation right. It's, you know, animating, it's, it's going to take a long time, okay? And it needs lots of, uh, like, yeah, it, it, it's hard, okay? But it's enjoyable when you see it move. But the movement should be right. And it's all about timing and spacing, okay? Don't populate your scene with lots of keyframes, okay? You can get so much done with the right spacing and just playing around with the graph editor handles, okay? Instead of creating keyframes all the way here, okay? That's really important. And that's going to be part of your final submission to um, get a screen capture of the graphs of some of the curves. So be mindful of that. Work with the graph editor. Goodbye for now.